Welcome to North American Rail Car Corporation's second how-to video on the HO scale high performance Magnalock brake lines. In this second video, the majority of the steps will be the same as in the first video. Uh, the major exception to this is the jig that we're going to use to help hold and align the air hose to the rail car as we glue it into place. Hopefully this will make your life a little bit easier over the old one. Also there may be some changes in the tools and supplies needed for the installation of the air hoses. So I do recommend you watch the whole video again just in case some may have changed. So let's go ahead and go over the tools and supplies needed for the installation of the air hoses. You'll need one ruler uh, where the increments go right to the edge like this one here. Gel super glue, paint and paintbrush, black sharpie, toothpicks, pair of needle nose pliers, pair of side cutters or rail nippers, an assortment of jeweler screwdrivers, depending on the car you're going to be working on, a pair of scissors, scrap cardboard from a cereal box, some poster board like this, a sharp razor knife, a pair of tweezers, one glue gun, some 18 gauge steel wire found at your local hardware store. A piece of hardboard or plywood as wide as a piece of track and six inches longer than the longest car you'll be working on. An old piece of track about six inches longer than your longest car. Uh, preferably not steel, you could use brass or nickel silver. You'll need one package of our high performance Magnalock brake lines for HO scale. We're going to be showing you how to install these high performance Magnalock brake lines on a North American Rail Car Corporation's cylindrical hopper. With the car upside down, uh, our first step is going to be removing the trucks, uh, removing the stock air hose that came with the car, and trimming off uh, the trip pin off the coupler. Now, I like to take the coupler off the car to trim off the trip pin, but uh, you don't have to, that's just a personal preference. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. As you can see, I have removed the trucks, uh, the stock air hose that came with the car. It was pretty easy. Uh, most of the time on this particular type of car, uh, it's not glued on. I can just easily pop it off with a jeweler screwdriver or a razor blade. And I also went ahead and trimmed off the trip pin off the coupler, as you can see here. Uh, the next step is going to be forming the new air line that's going to be leading to the air hose out of the wire that you have received in your kit. Uh, basically, it's going to be running along the corner here between the car body and the coupler box, along here, and if the car is right side up, it would go down to the bottom of the coupler box here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to form the wire now. Go ahead and grab the wire that came with the kit at one end, uh, measure roughly a quarter of an inch and we're going to make a 90 degree bend in the wire. Kind of like that right there. So now we're going to go ahead and bring up the car and measure the length that we need uh, to cut the airline at. So grab the wire that we have just bent at a 90 degree angle like that and now we're going to measure the length of the airline so we can cut it to the right length. Uh, but first, uh, when we line it up for cutting, uh, we got to make sure that the airline here doesn't stick past the coupler box. We want to have it flush with the edge of it here. So not past it like this, but flush as possible with the uh, end of the coupler box. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it here. You just have to use a black Sharpie or any color Sharpie. Now it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because most of the time we were never going to see this particular end anyway. Before we go ahead and install the airline that we have just cut and bent for this particular car, I went ahead and cut and bent another airline if this car was representing a longer car. Uh, you could see that uh, the airline is uh, cut to length and bent slightly differently uh, than the last one we did. 
it is just past the end of the coupler box, not flush uh, like the last one. And it wraps around underneath uh, the coupler itself like that, so it lines up uh, with the center of the coupler, sh coupler box itself like this. And also keeping in mind, uh, it is still flush with the bottom of uh, the coupler box itself and it doesn't stick below the bottom of the coupler box uh, cover in this instance. Uh, you really never want to go uh, below uh, the bottom of the coupler box cover. That's always in line with it like this. Now some coupler box covers are a lot thinner than this one like uh, some Atherin uh, blue box kits that had just a uh, thin piece of uh, sheet metal as a cover. Uh, in that instance you want to make sure the bottom of the airline is 1 16th of an inch from the bottom of the coupler shank. So from the bottom of the coupler shank down the bottom of the airline should be 1 16th of an inch and uh, not below that or your air hoses may look funny while, when they're connected together. Um, now the main reasons uh, for running uh, the airline like this on uh, locomotives and cars is to give you a little bit more reach with your air hose uh, rather than trying to make your air hose longer. Uh, if you make your air hose longer it may look funny and may get, may get caught up in your track work. Uh, this helps out a lot on sharp radiuses that you may have on your layout. On my test track here I have a 24 inch radius so on my locomotives I have the uh, airline bent in this fashion so they won't uncouple on me while I go through an S-curve. Uh, on regular cars like this one that we're working on today you don't have to do this. Uh, they work just fine in the regular side position as I'll continue to show you how to do. But this, this gives you an idea uh, on how to uh, run an airline on longer cars and highly recommended running uh, the airlines like this on locomotives as well. This uh, definitely helps with the performance of the air hoses themselves when they are connected on sharper radiuses. So what I'm going to do now is take off this airline that I've taped on here and we'll go ahead and glue on the one that we have bent and cut for this particular car. It's time to uh, glue the airline that we cut and bent the first time to the car. Uh, we're just going to add a little bit of glue with the toothpick along this corner of the car right here. We don't really need any uh, glue along this outer edge. It just looks nicer uh, if we just keep the glue underneath the car right around here. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to grab a toothpick and add some glue right in this corner here. We don't need uh, very much glue uh, to start with. We could always add more later if we need to. We have uh, just glued the airline to the car. Uh, keep in mind to keep the airline flush with the end of the coupler box. We don't want it to be sticking past uh, the coupler box when possible. Uh, now we're just going to let the glue set up and while it's doing that we're going to go ahead and make a few jigs. The first uh, jig we're going to make today is from our cereal box cardboard. Uh, cut a piece roughly inch and a half by an inch and a half and a strip inch and a half by roughly a half an inch. All we're going to do is we're going to glue this to this and I'm just going to make like a little stop so we could cut our air hose to the proper length uh, when we need to later on in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. You don't need much glue, just a couple dabs of gel glue, that's all you need. And that's one jig done. Let's move on to the next one. 
This jig here we're going to make now is going to help us hold and align the air hose in the correct position while we glue it to our rail car or locomotive. Uh, compared to the first jig that we made in the first video, this one should be a lot easier to make and use. Uh, there's a couple things that you need to know about this jig before we go ahead and assemble it. Uh, this jig needs to be at least one millimeter thick. Uh, this particular poster board that I'm using happens to be three pieces, makes up one millimeter. You could use cardboard from your sewer box again, or poster board, cardboard, or whatever you want, but the spacer has to be one millimeter thick. Uh, the wire here also should be the same size of wire that I mentioned before. Uh, if it's not, uh, you may have to adjust the thickness of the jig so that the arrows is still a millimeter off the rail head. But anyway, what I'm going to do here is use a poster board that I have. Uh, we're going to cut uh, three pieces, inch and a half by inch and a half square, and a piece of the steel wire that I mentioned earlier again, inch and a half long too. So we're going to go ahead and assemble this jig. With our cardboard glued together, we're going to glue our steel wire along one edge of the jig about a quarter of an inch away. Uh, keep in mind, when we glue the wire to the jig, we only want to put glue on the left-hand side of the cardboard, not the right-hand side because we don't want the glue later on interfering uh, with the air hose while we try to position it. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, just a few drops of glue, that's all you need. And there you go, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Let's move on to the next one. This next jig we're going to make is going to help us hold the rail car steady and help us give the right spacing off the rail head of the air hose. So grab the piece of wood that I mentioned earlier, same with the track, cut it at least six inches longer than your longest car locomotive, and I'm just going to go ahead and glue it down with hot glue. As you can see here, I have glued the track to our piece of wood using the hot glue gun, keeping in mind to keep the track nice and straight and flat as possible when you're doing that. Uh, there's two more things we've got to add to this to make it work properly. At one end, we could glue some scrap cardboard or a piece of wood to act as a stop so the rail car will not roll off the end of the track. Uh, the other end, on the bottom, we want to glue a piece of wood or some cardboard roughly an eighth of an inch thick uh, onto the bottom here. And that is for when you put it down, the car will roll and stay against uh, the stop we glued to the other side and will not roll forward on us while we try to uh, align and glue the air, air hose to it. Uh, it just makes it a little bit more uh, stable that way. So uh, let's go ahead and do that now. As you can see here I have glued the stop to one side of the track like this and on the other side and the bottom I glued a little spacer here uh, like so. And now you can see that the track is on a slight angle and the car will stay up against the stop and won't move around on us while we uh, glue the air hose to it. So let's move on to the next step. The glue should be set up enough on our car here for us to trim off the airline. But before we do that, uh, we got to make sure uh, the airline is 1 16th of an inch below the coupler shank itself. In this particular case, the coupler cover is pretty thick, uh, so it's uh, close enough where we could uh, cut it off flush with the bottom of the coupler box cover. Some manufacturers uh, have thin coupler box covers, uh, like Athens uh, Blue Box is just uh, a thin piece of metal uh, that, that covers a cup, the coupler itself. Uh, in that case, you'll have to measure from the bottom of the coupler shank down a sixteenth of an inch and then trim off your airline at that distance. That just makes the, all the airlines uh, the same height and they look better when they're connected together and function that little bit better too. So we're going to go ahead and trim off the 
air line here flush with the bottom of the coupler box cover. There we uh, trimmed it off flush with the bottom of the coupler box cover. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and uh, install the wheels back on the car, flip it back over and continue on with the installation. Here's the first jig that we assembled today earlier on. Uh, we're going to use this to help uh, cut the total length of their hose at 3 8 of an inch long. Now it's very important that we keep all the air hoses at the same length so when they're coupled together they function properly and look nice as well. Um, now 99% of the cars out there in locomotives will never need a longer or shorter hose than this. But uh, I still recommend trying this length of hose before you uh, uh, try to adjust the length of the, the, the hose itself. Uh, but that's why we also uh, have the hose slightly longer so you can make adjustments if you need to in your particular case. So let's go ahead and use the ruler and make a mark on the jig from the stop at 3 8 of an inch. And again that's why uh, a ruler that has uh, increments right to the edge uh, is a big help at this particular point. Uh, so place your ruler up against the stop and with your razor knife make a mark in the cardboard at exactly 3 8 of an inch long. Again I can't stress enough how important it is to keep your hoses all at the same length so be as accurate as possible at this particular point. Uh, now it may, may be hard to see uh, but here's the mark right there. So let's go ahead and cut our air hose now. We have an air hose on our jig now and we're going to go ahead and cut it to the correct length of 3 8 of an inch long. So take your finger, hold it against the stop of the jig and firmly cut the air line at your mark that you had on the jig. So there it is, it's pretty simple to cut the air hose at exactly 3 8 of an inch long. Uh, let's continue on with the next step. Here is the second jig that we assembled earlier on in the video. Again, this is going to help us hold, align and space the air hose correctly while we glue it to the rail car. With the jig orientated so that the side that has the steel wire is facing you like this, we're going to go grab our air hose that we have just cut to the correct length and place it on to the jig. Here's the air hose that we just cut to the right length of 3 8 of an inch long. As you can see, one side of the magnet has a colored dot on it. Uh, this particular color is red, but it could be red, purple, or green. It doesn't make a difference. All it means is this particular uh, side of the magnet has to be facing up or towards you when it's finally mounted to the rail car. Uh, that's very important. If it is not, uh, your air hoses may not couple together properly or couple together properly with someone else's air hoses that they have on their car. So again, it's very important that the color dot is always facing up or towards you depending how you look at it when it's mounted to the rail car. Now we're going to place the air hose to our jig on the metal wire. Uh, keeping in mind about 3 8 of an inch from the right hand side of the jig at a slight angle like that. As you can see there it's at a slight angle and the color dot is facing up or towards you depending on how you look at it. So let's go ahead and line this up with the airline that we have previously installed on the rail car. Here's the track fixture with our car on it. The car is all the way against the stop at the end of the track. Uh, now we can go in and I could show you how to align the air hose to the air line of the car. Here's the jig that we just placed our uh, air hose onto. Uh, we're going to use this again to help hold, align and space the air hose correctly on the car and off the tracks. Now the position where we want to align the air hose to before we glue it is right there, right on the side of the end of the air line we just glued on. Not necessarily right on the bottom, 
but right on this side right about here. So we're going to slide the jig over with our arrows on it and using a non-metallic pointer we're going to slowly move the magnet till we get the air hose lined up in a correct position which that is pretty close right there. So we're going to slowly go ahead back it off so we don't move it and we'll move on to the next step. Before we glue the air hose to the airline of the car, I'm going to show you the angle that we'll have to set while we're gluing the air hose to the airline of the car. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's going to go off the airline here, which you can just see through the walkway of the car. And it's going to come at roughly at a 45 degree angle to in line with the center of the car or center of the coupler here. So no matter where a belt's on the car, uh, the air hose is attached to, you always want uh, the air, uh, the tip of the air hose to line up with the center of the car or coupler. So let's go ahead and I'll place some glue onto the air line and we'll uh, slide the air hose over. Now I chose to uh, put the glue on the air line of uh, the rail car rather than uh, the air hose itself because I don't want to accidentally move the air hose while I'm doing it. So that's why I decided to uh, go with uh, putting the glue on the end of the air line rather than the air hose. So all you need is just a tiny bit of glue. You don't need much because you could go back over it with a little bit more after if you needed to. It's pretty hard with the camera right above me, but that looks about right. And now what we'll do is we're just going to leave it for a few minutes and then uh, we could uh, go over the glue joint with a little bit more glue to make it look nicer and a little bit more stronger and we'll set that aside for the glue to set. The glue should be set up enough for us to move on to the next step that is painting the air line to match the body color of the car. I only recommend using uh, an acrylic paint to do this so it doesn't uh, uh, interfere with the rubber in the air hose itself. Also we're going to color uh, the magnet black with a sharpie. I only re recommend using a black sharpie. It dries fast within a couple minutes and you're good to go to use the car. Uh, if you use uh, paint, uh, uh, even acrylic paint, it seems dry in a few hours, but it's not. You'll have to let it sit for a good 24 hours or maybe even longer uh, before I'd attempt to couple uh, uh, the magnets together or they may stick together permanently or they may may break the air hose if you try to uncouple them. So let's go ahead and take off the wheel uh, sets here or the truck and go ahead and paint the air line to match the body color of the car and color the magnet black. Here's the finished product. I painted the air line to match the body color of the car. I also have colored the magnet black with a Sharpie. Uh, also, try not to get too much paint on the actual air hose itself. You want to try to keep it nice and limber. Um, now I'll show you one of my locomotives and how I ran the air line on that, just like I explained earlier. But I'll just show you how I done it on my locomotive. I'd like to show you how I ran my air line on my locomotive. Uh, it's pretty much the same as I showed you earlier on the rail car. It came out of the top right hand corner of the coupler box down and along the front of the bottom of the coupler box to the center of the coupler box like that. Then I ran the, then I glued the air hose to the end of that and came straight down uh, using the same spacing jig as you used on the rail car. So I hope that gives you a hint on how to do it. I like to install all my air hoses on locomotives like that. Just gives a better uh, performance of the air hose on tighter curves. So I thank you for watching this video and please stay tuned for more exciting products coming in the future to HO scale.